My Tacoma name is Tawiwi, means morning star. Known fondly as Grandma Aggie, Agnes Baker Pilgrim touched many lives in her 95 years on this earth. Grandma Aggie answered a spiritual call that she give voice to the voiceless. As co-founder of the International Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers, and as the oldest surviving elder of the Tekelma, her voice was a strong one, powered by love. Let's hear from Grandma Aggie and some who came to know her. I first met Grandma, it was the mid-80s, I guess, uh -huh. when she moved back to the Rogue Valley and we've become very good friends. We've worked on a lot of projects together, the salmon ceremony, and quite a, quite a few She brought that things. back in its traditional yeah, form. Yeah, we started that out at the Applegate because the original site on the Rogue River wasn't available to us. Mm -hmm. and we did it out there for 20-some years, and then finally in 2007 brought it to its original site at Tillamique, the ancient village site on the Rogue River. They lived here 22,000 years. And their biggest staple was from the river of the fish. And they, would do, well, they wouldn't do a salmon ceremony till one man of the tribe would sit on the story chair in the middle of the Rogue River, upriver from Gold Hill, Oregon. That they, he would sit up there in the story chair and watch the eddy below the rock. It, they wouldn't... They wouldn't catch a salmon until they saw one coming at eddy below the story chair. And when they did, they would all gather and, and catch salmon. And they'd do a salmon cookout on the river with them all coming together so peacefully and to share that food. So when I was living in Crescent City, California, I was, God called me to come back here in 1993 to restore the sacred salmon ceremony. Grandma Aggie brought the salmon ceremony back um, in 1990s. We first brought it back to the Applegate River because the land at Tillamique, the traditional land, wasn't available at the time. And the ceremony was done out there for many, many years. And then when this land became available in 2007, uh, we, we got together and planned out bringing the ceremony back to its original place at Tillamik. And that happened in 2007, and the ceremony was done for a number of years. We haven't done a ceremony in the last couple of years. Um, Aggie is uh, now 95, um, not sure how much longer she can do the salmon ceremony, or whether it's time to pass this along to a new keeper of the salmon ceremony. But we're also looking at trying to put together a ceremony that really addresses the original intentions of the old time ceremony. They did this ceremony before they even any of them went fishing. All the tribes come together right here, thousands of them. Every, every tribe here in Southern Oregon. My name's Tish McFadden, and I came to Oregon in 1980 as a cultural resource specialist for the Forest Service. My job then was to survey lands along the Rogue River corridor, looking for prehistoric sites of Agnes Baker Pilgrim's ancestors who lived along the Rogue River for over 15,000 years. They had a sustainability that we are hoping to retain in our modern life now, where they could stay along this river all this time in balance with nature and with each other. And I'm here today with Tuawi, Agnes Baker Pilgrim, elder of the Tekelma people from Southwest Oregon. It was magic. You hear the sound of the falls. She was singing in Tekelma and there are drums. It was the first time since 1850 when all these people were marched out of here that the elder of the Tekelma made it to that spot. So I came today to sit in the same place where my father sat and letting people to know that we are carrying on the culture and the traditions of our people here. Morning Star is 
the source of wisdom in this book. It's a journey to wisdom story, salmon taking a trip from the Great Salt Sea of the Pacific Ocean all the way up to Boundary Springs. And he, he is inspired by you, by Morning Star. He's swimming toward his teacher. And all of Salmon's friends are inspired by Salmon. Mm -hmm. So they're making this travel together and they're helping each <coughs> other through several challenges and rainstorms mm -hmm. and earthquakes and winter and snow. And they arrive mm -hmm. at Boundary Springs and they meet you there. My husband at the time was a fisherman on the Klamath River Grant Pilgrim, and he caught all our fish, cut, and he made all our cooking sticks out of redwood, because redwood, when it's heated, doesn't have any pitch laced in, in the wood. And he'd make all our cooking sticks and catch our fish, and then we came over to, on the Rogue River above Gold Hill, and started this uh, Sabbath ceremony. We started uh, in 93. 1994, the state fishing game came and they said, Grandma, we don't know what you've done, but there's more salmon in that river than we ever heard of. <laughs> I said, when you do this blessing, God helps and to bring the salmon back. Telling how that came about, she was working in Crescent City with children and their families and she was sitting out on her deck one day and again she'd been hearing this that grandma or maybe maybe spirit creator didn't call her grandma but this message you need to be you will be a voice for the voiceless and she would wonder what's that what does that mean and she was sitting out on her deck and had a glass of water there and she looked at it finally and she thought hmm, that water can't speak for itself. And then she looked down at her dog, sitting by her and said, hmm, my dog can't speak for himself. And then she was aware of the wind on her face and she thought, oh, the wind, the air, the air can't speak for itself. So she got this idea of what Creator was talking to, about, that she understood then much more fully what being a voice for the voiceless really would entail, speaking for the air, the waters, the animals that had no voice. Well, I'd like to see the hands of all the grandparents that are here. Bless you. You are the wisdom keepers from your families. Bless you all. The rest of you are in training. <laughs> so lighten up. You know, getting old isn't for wimps, is it? Us grandparents know that. It's a bumpy road. Never did I think when I retired way back there that I'd, I'd get to this point in my life. I'm on roller skates whether you see them or not. <laughs> I'm going all the time to get home once in a while as a treat. And being this international grandma is not an easy job. I put in 10, 14, 17 hours a day. Try that when you're nearly 86 years old. <laughs> Many countries that I go to, the elders can't believe I still drive a car. <laughs> well, I used to be a race driver when I was young. And so all of those teachings from my pit crew still work today. I used to be a log truck driver, set my own chokers, and I used to be a boxer. Nobody messed with me, or my sisters. My brothers taught us how to box because they said, we can't take care of you girls all the time, so you gotta learn to defend yourself. So, but that's, a, that's another life, a different life. And I am in the spiritual world now, and I fought that for many years. Because there's six chiefs in my background. One of them was the first elected chief of Siletz of the Confederated Tribe, Chief George Harney, my grandfather. And uh, my mother was an Indian princess, although they didn't say that to her because it wasn't a word for that in her language.
But I didn't want to do this spiritual path because I wasn't worthy enough. I wasn't good enough. Leave me alone. Give it to somebody else. At one time, my friend who is a psychologist in Eureka, California, said, don't you just think you better quit doing that and do it? <laughs> and I said, oh, I guess so. <laughs> and so the minute I said that, I felt like a big load went off of my back. And so it has been quite a journey, quite a story. Be grateful to wake up in the morning and say, ah, one more day. Learn to be grateful for just one day at a time. Before, when I was a voice for the voices touring the world, all by myself, being this voice for the animal kingdom, because they don't have a voice, and for the air, and for the water, and for the earth, I was a voice for the voiceless. One time I was in the night, woke up and told me that water could hear to talk for it. Years went by until last year I met Dr. Immersa Omoto from Japan, the famous scientist that has done a wonderful thing for the world that has proven that water can hear. He wanted to know how I knew. I said, spirit told me. I had been talking about it for a long time because I knew we were all water babies and water would call me as it called my people hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago that without water we would all die. Thank you so much for what you do and the life you give. Bless you, bless you, bless you. <laughs>